Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. Alrighty, as the title suggests, we talking about the moon. Yes, totally unfinished terrain, and haven't really done much of anything on this. Just want to talk about this project, if anybody wants to take over on this one, and, and run with this type of project. It'll save me from having to create a damn game, because <laughs> I don't want to make a game. I'd rather help you guys make stuff for your games. Yay. Of course, you can't climb that. Um, not long ago, it was brought to my attention that NASA and, well, let's just say um, the commercial communities have decided that um, after looking at all the different samples from rocks and stuff and the current state of modern technology, uh, yeah, mostly the rocks. Uh, that were recovered from the moon. So we have decreased gravity here. Um, uh, yeah, the, the samples of the moon dirt and rocks and so forth showed that, um, yeah, there's a really high percentage of titanium and other stuff. Why is there just like a weird black spot right there? Interesting. Um, but yeah, there was um, a lot of titanium and other materials that... Um, well, hell, if we could commercially um, just start harvesting all the stuff from the moon and just mine it out to a you know a, you know a husk or a hull and, and whatever, yeah, just seems like the thing to do. Well, um, well, we can't exactly um, just set up shop on the moon because you know there's a lot of things that would be a problem, but near the poles of the moon it was discovered that there is water-based ice loosely water-based um, ice that's on the surface of the moon and below the surface of the moon so it is deemed that within the next four and a half to five years from today uh, we will have people on the moon again and part of that is for the exploration and the potential harvesting of materials from the moon. Since this is a reality, I figure a project like this, where the nature of the game is similar to other games that you've seen where you're going from planet to planet, instead of going to foreign planets, we're going to the moon, which is close by, and it's easier for us now with space stations and so forth to be able to travel to the moon with a lot more relative ease. Um, the big consideration is finding, testing, and securing a good solid source of the um, near the poles of the moon to be able to find that ice, that water-based ice. Because water is H2O, of course, is going to be needed to convert to, well, use water for, you know, potentially growing plants and things like that, where they're going to get the soil, I guess you're going to have to bring your own soil and compost it from the waste generated by the many, many people they're wanting to send to the moon. Um, but with that as well, they're wanting to convert it. Um, this is just basically ju just getting started. It's, it's talking about um, what's happening in real life, which is going to be that um, uh, countries around the world and businesses around the world are getting together to commercially um, exploit the moon, essentially. Within the next five years, this is real, within the next five years, we're going to have people on the moon again. And it's because there's such a high percentage of titanium and other um, precious materials that are on the moon that make up the surface of the moon and so forth. Um, there's going to be an attempt to start colonizing the moon within the next five years. <clears throat> Coffee. Uh, yes, I have a lot of water right here in front of me, too. But, yeah, so the, the whole basic concept of a game based off of this is you are part of an advanced scout team that was sent to the moon, and which this project I'll probably throw in some Sydney Studios assets, naturally, because I got them, um, and they're awesome. But you would be um, one of the advanced parties. This would be single-player and multiplayer, um, you can have your friends join you on your 
your exploration. And all I did was I, I used Terrain Party to um, import some basic terrain in and modified it a little bit just to kind of smooth it out and add some interested areas. But you can create whatever terrain you want if you wanted to make this game on your own. Um, I'm not trying to make this game completely, but give other people the idea to actually go ahead and make this game. Because I think it would be a really cool concept since it's going to be more and more in the public's eye. No, this is actually um, a height map from... Um, I think I used... Yeah, I actually used uh, uh, an area in North Carolina. It's uh, It was Baden Lake. Uh, the Uari uh, National Forest area, but then I went through and I, I re-sculpted a bunch of it. I just want to have some really high noise areas that um, would add a natural bar barrier for the player to keep them in, and some little noisy terrain. I don't know what's going on with the shadows here. Um, this project that I threw it into, I think I was screwing around with the um, the sky sphere and stuff like that, and I think I kind of killed it. <laughs> But I could always re-import that crap too, so. So the whole purpose of what the game would be is, like I said, you're you're on the surface of the moon. You've got a, and I just don't want to get into some crap assets until I figured out what I wanted to add in here. Um, I said these are just really just terrible assets, but like I said, they were just subbing in here just to get you know, something going. So you would have, like, your ship brought in a small survival area, somewhere where you can go to to replenish oxygen and, and have so forth, because you're not going to have a good source of oxygen on the planet. Um, so you've got the um, survival pod that, that you landed on. Instead of a traditional lander, um, if you look at Elon Musk, he's attempting to also make a trip to the moon and colonize the moon. But he's probably going to make it into a tourist destination, um, which, okay, whatever, that's fine. Uh, I'm not against that. But essentially, you came down, and this, whatever, your survival pod is where your base of operations would be. So you're inside here, and I just quickly made this a couple days ago, just to have something in here. Um, I'm not going to build the lighting on this, because the lighting, well, there is no lighting in here. What I would probably end up doing is just throwing this into a blueprint. That way I don't have to deal with lighting issues for now. But you landed on this. You've got a base of operation. Um, would probably simulate that there was another section that broke apart that um, contained maybe like a lunar buggy of some sort. Yeah, see, there's still problems with this one. Um, got the camera speed turned up pretty high. Let's bump that back down to four again. And let's grab this location copy. This one location paste. And I'll just bring it in. That way it'll line up pretty close. Like I said, these were just temporary assets just to get something going. But, um,. So your job is to actually locate the source of water and then set up a, maybe a, like a harvesting system, put like a door cap on this side or whatever. But these modules were meant to be joined together so that you could actually have multiples if needed. So you have your, your entry and your exit here, block off the other end we'll say, and you're out to explore, find sources of the ice that's on the planet. And, um, yeah, I'm not going to build lighting. It, it's a big map, so, like I said, what I would probably end up doing is putting these two pieces in a blueprint just so I don't have to deal with lighting issues right now. Because building lighting on a map, the more you add to the map, and the, this is just, you know, starter content and basic stuff that I, I slap together. I can do like save all. I we'll call this. She will change this to Luna one. 
So essentially what I do is I, I went into um, I create uh, on all projects that I'm working on I build a, a build map which is where I come in here and build basic you know prototype stuff like BSG yeah yeah I cannot speak tonight BSP geometries so I mean I, I'll take um, you know I'll go into like starter content grab a material that I like that I would want for the outer surface say if we wanted to do like brushed nickel and then grab a cylinder and zero it out and then rotate it 90 pick it up yeah like I, said, I made these really quickly I didn't spend a whole lot of time making these I mean if you want the assets I mean that's fine but they're they're junk they're they're terrible since we don't want an octagon we want more sides we'll come over here to sides and I'll do 20 and I'll change the Z height to 500 the outer radius will do um, that's probably too small yeah but let's do the um, outer radius to 150 let's see how big that looks um, it's small but say if that's what we wanted I'll actually take it back up to 200 just to show um, 200 don't know why my player started so high up in the air um, yeah so you, you get your cylinder base for it and then you can take it and change it to hollow you can change the uh, the side thickness ah undo wrong one the inner radius will do that's fine but we could also change it to 195 or whatever so that creates your, your basic inner structure. Um, you can make it as long as you want to, short as you want to. And all I did to create the end caps was um, the same thing. I grabbed a cone and changed the number of sides to match the number that was on there. There we go. So that's 20 sides. Rotate it. 90 you know this is a lot more pointy we don't want it as pointy oh let's zero it out and we want this to be 200 and I'm going to rotate it around the other direction And you can also tell this to be hollow as well. Because as you see, if you walk in here, it's just a flat end. And if you don't want the flat end, then grab your cone brush, tell it to be hollow. Change your Z height to, say, 100. No, I didn't say 290. I said 100. What in the hell? Okay, let's undo hollow for now. And let's change our Z to 100. We can even change it to 50. And then select it to be hollow. And... Bad parameters for Z. Because it changed the cap Z to that. So you're going to have to adjust the cap Z. but it will dish it out on the inside so now if we go in here and look at it then we have a bit more dished out section see the lighting is going to be terrible but what's going to happen is whenever you're creating these say if you wanted to do the same thing on the other end control c control v and rotate it i've done a, a bunch of different videos on creating static meshes from BSP geometries so then you need some way of getting in so I would take a box brush using the same material 
bring that in here we'll just zero that out and we don't need it that wide so let's change the Y to 100 the X to 100 and we'll leave the Z height the same but I will just bring it up just a hair and change it from additive to subtractive and there you go yeah these are just prototyping you know stuff you know I'm like I said I'm probably gonna end up using uh, Cindy Studios assets but if you want to actually create these in blender that would be a lot better um, but for rapid prototyping this kind of stuff works great it gets the the job done and you can just get to working on other elements so if you wanted to then convert these I'll just grab those and create static mesh assets mesh and I'm just gonna call this my SM mini underscore pod so once I've created this this new static mesh you know that um, you're not gonna have any collisions so you're gonna end up having to make custom collisions and stuff like that um, what I just for prototyping needs I do the one thing that I tell everybody it's not the best thing to do but it gets the job done is you scroll down first off to general settings change your light map resolution to 256 light map coordinate index to 1 and then just change your collision to use complex collision as simple and that's going to give you a, a basic collision system it's going to be dark inside so if you do a a lighting build then you're going to notice that um, if you don't change your light map resolution and uh, coordinate index the whole material is just going to show up as black and it's not going to be good to work with so by changing those two parameters and by adding the the basic uh, if you're doing other shapes you can actually go in there and manually make um, collisions but um, like I said this is just prototyping stuff so you can see it's, it's gonna be really 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 dark but if I go in here and create a blueprint um, actor we'll call this our BP mini pod go in here go back here go to my mesh select the mini pod add content here we go then whenever we go in here to let's get rid of that one do a quick lighting build since there's nothing on this map it won't take but a couple seconds but that's just to get rid of that shadow and there we go so now if we throw this into our map the next thing we want to do naturally is raise it up so what you can actually do is minimize that window so that you've got just your you know your object and make your changes and it'll make changes on the map itself so you can see that what you're doing in the blueprint is, is taking effect so that's fine and I'll just drag that back up there compost save and there you go another thing you'd probably also want to do is create a um, since this is going to be your your refuge you can create all your lighting and stuff inside here so that um, whenever you actually go into it it's not being it's not affecting the the rest of the lighting so if I add another component um, point light so you can add your lighting in this way and like I said, it will act independently without having to affect your your lighting build. So if I leave that in the center and just raise it up, I'm just going to do a basic lighting for right now. And another thing you can do is, you know, adjust your radius, whatever you need to do on your lighting. I'm, I'm not worried about making this perfect for right now. But add in a capsule collision if you were doing this way 
and let's see if I can get it to, to cooperate. To 90, and let's scale it up. And let's go 10. A little bit too big, but take your time with something like this right here. And when you're creating this, let's try nine. Yeah, that'll be good enough. So by adding this collision in here, um, I'll actually shrink it up just a hair. So you've got this. You can actually go in here and... Honestly, get rid of all this stuff right here. Right click on that, add event, on component begin, overlap. Get a reference to our player character, which is player base in my case, is my, my player character. And right now we'll just say um, print text. And what we'll do is we'll just say, God, get in there. You are now regenerating oxygen, whatever. So this would be your safe zone. If you try to go out without your spacesuit on, um, you could automatically start taking damage. But in this case, you know, since this is your refuge, you walk in and right now it's just going to say in the upper left-hand corner, you're now regenerating oxygen. Then whatever you leave it, um, you could do the same basic thing here. Click on your capsule, right click um, on component end overlap. And again, I'm just going to do this quick and cheesy. Go to other actor and thing here. Leaving an oxygen zone. Just something to kind of showcase. You'd probably want to use this as a, um, a widget blueprint. So you go in here, you're now regenerating oxygen, so you're in an oxygen-free zone. You can see that um, I've got something added to my player bar in the bottom right-hand corner. And you can see you're now living in the oxygen zone, so it would trigger back and forth. Safe, not safe. So if you come out of here and your player is now not able to breathe while they're not inside that zone, um, let's see here. I was adding a, a temperature system as well, and that's what that that bar was. Um, but it's easy now to add a um, a new component, which we're going to add in a variable. Call this oxygen, because we needs to breathe. And I would probably make this into a um a float just to kind of yeah you could do an integer or a float either one entirely up to you and our normal state of oxygen is a hundred percent compost and save then for now what I'll do is I'll change that so in the bottom right hand corner you got your health bar and we'll turn that other one into your oxygen bar um, widgets go to my HUD and this is using my civil multiplayer steam template also by the way player HUD yeah health bar and temp bar I'm gonna change that to oxygen bar we'll leave the same color that that works for oxygen I guess um, go to our graph now got our player temperature I'm not going to change the binding. Um, actually, let's go ahead and, and just do that. Um, what you would do is, right now I've got get player temp for that particular bar. Um, I'm going to remove binding, and then I'm going to create a binding to show you what it basically looks like. And essentially, get oxygen bar percent zero is the default name they put in there um, get oxygen sounds good to me player get player oxygen 
just because I like a name. And essentially, all you're going to do is cast to player underscore base, which you know it will be whatever your player character is, and then get player character. Yeah, these these are really simple to do. And what you're trying to do here is you're going to get oxygen. And so that it actually shows up correctly as a percentage from 0 to 100, all we're going to do is drag off from here and we're going to do a float divided by a float and we're going to make that 100. If your health percentage on your scale was 10,000, you put 10,000 in there. So then we just plug that into there and that's it. Floats plug directly in. If you're using an integer, you would end up having to convert this to an integer and then to that. It's just easier to for me to use a float. So now, if I hit play, you see my oxygen bar is full. Um, what you could also do in your map is, and that's where the fun part comes in, is your map needs to be covered. Well, you could do it a, a few different ways. Um, in your player itself on begin play right now I'm running my, my startup stuff but on your event begin play uh, what you could do is if you're going to be outside doing stuff uh, you could you know get a reference to your oxygen and you know, also set oxygen and what you would end up being is creating another variable in a safe zone and change that to a boolean um, okay let's change the name again in safe zone okay so you're going to end up using both of these. You're also going to have in safe zone and a branch node and yeah. So essentially what you're going to try to do is on event begin play. I'm just going to create this as a custom event. Custom event outside. So what's happening is whenever you, you're starting this, in the very beginning, say if you're outside, it's going to ask, are you outside? And same thing with our gadget that we created for our, our uh, safe zone. It would set in safe zone to true, and it would stop oxygen regeneration. You know, It would start oxygen regeneration and stop you from suffocating. So now, whenever you're outside, you, you're going to lose oxygen. Um, so if it is true... We want to get our oxygen. We'll do a float minus a float. You could also set up as a decrement or whatever. You could set the amount and we'll just say 10 so we can see it doing something. So we're going to set our oxygen to um, this minus 10 to set our new oxygen level. And you'll end up having to create this like a delay um, there's other ways of doing it as well and we'll delay for one second and then we'll start this crap all over again we'll just loop it back up to here I'm just going to drag this down so we can see that it's looping so if you're outside, you're going to lose 10 oxygen. This is drastic. Just wanted it to be visible. We're going to lose 10 oxygen every second. It's, you can, yeah, you can do it that way too if you're running off of an event tick. Um, especially because you don't want it to run every FPS. But by doing it this way, this is a, a constant that's always going to be here. Um, I'm going to start it off just plugging it into here. And again, you would want your um, your nice little habitat to 
stop this from happening. So if you go to where is the mod gadget minipod and here since we got this going on anyway we can grab here um, save get in safe zone sorry we're not wanting to get it we want to set it in both cases here um, So when you leave, we'll leave that unchecked. Um, so you're no longer in a safe zone. But when you enter it, you are in a safe zone. And I'm probably forgetting something because I'm, I'm rushing in here. So what we want to do is we want to take away our health or our oxygen when we come outside. Oh, no, I'm forgetting something. Um, in safe zone is fault by default. Um, get our oxygen, subtract 10. No. Um, fault. Dumbass. If we're not in a, if we are in a safe zone, it's true, then we don't want anything to happen. Um, we could just come off from right here and just say okay set oxygen to 100 crude but you could say okay you want it to start coming back up yeah I'll, I'll add it in here in just a second and just want to make sure that the um, the breathing thing was working or not so you can see now I'm losing my oxygen oxygen levels going down but as soon as I go in here poof goes back to full again when I leave I want it to start and yeah you would actually have to go back in there yeah you probably would end up putting that on an event tick um, let's see here or you could also just take that and God damn it, Unreal Engine 4. You mind catching up? So on the on component end overlap, we want to force the outside thing to happen again. So I'll just grab from here and outside. Damn, I can't spell. Outside. So we'll just run that again from here. So we'll plug you in there, and it'll start the outside effect all over again. So I'll quickly test that, make sure it's working. So we first start off, we're losing oxygen. You wouldn't want to lose oxygen that quick. You, you want your character to have like a spacesuit on. So now you go inside, you're full on oxygen. Let's go back outside again, and we're losing oxygen again. So it works. You can set up the different rates and so forth. Um, that's just a crude method to, to get it into a usable state again in the prototyping state of this so we'll go back to our well we don't need you in here get you out of my my build map so my build map is always empty we'll go to Luna 1 and let's get rid of this one and this one and now without that there we don't have to worry about um, the light mapping so now we just drag in our new pod Now we hit play. Go right ahead. That, that's why I'm sharing this right here. Is this is cool shit you can use? See, I got my own crappy interior lighting. I probably put better lighting than this in there, but yeah, get with me after I get done with the stream. And I'll take a look at it. And with the the decreased um, gravity, this was just a, a quick. I probably would change a few other things too on that. In your player character, when you're outside in a lower gravity area, um, just go to your character movement. And um, you know, falling lateral friction, you can modify a lot of these things right here. Um, 
air control, but essentially jump velocity. I'm going to knock this down from 200 to 150, just to see how that affects the jumping. Um, gravity scale, I, all I did was I changed that to 0.2. I lowered the, the amount of gravity, uh, just so that um, I'm on the lunar surface. It has less gravity than uh, it does on Earth. So I would tweak around and you don't want to, you don't want that much. I'd probably increase the, the gravity a little bit more. Um, to make it disappear. Um, Well, I mean, you could continue to add on to your, your mesh. Whenever you're creating your mesh, the, the mesh is entirely up to you. Um, so whenever you're creating whatever you create for your mesh. Like I said, this was just a rapid prototype setup just to have something to, to test with, like the oxygen regen, stuff like that. Um, the collision, you could use a box collision instead because you think about it, your character is not going to be all the way over here on the sides and whatnot. I used a capsule because, well, I made a capsule. It kind of fit. I could shrink it down a little bit more. Um, I could have used, um, I could have doubled up um, the circular ones, the, the sphere collisions. I could use the box collision so that when you create an airlock system so that instead of it matching basically this, we could probably trigger it from the outside. Yeah, you can see it's triggered right there. Um, you could set up a box collision so that you actually have to pass a certain threshold once you get inside. Just run a, a, a box collision and, and shape it to match with your blueprint. So that um, what you end up with is a more reasonable, because you're not really going to be up here on the sides and on all the contours and stuff. So use whatever you need to. I like the box collisions because you can shape them however you need to. Um, if you need to, you can overlap them, but um, and all you do is just copy the, the whatever you put into it so that it matches. Oh, my the top of the building disappear? Um, well, since you're already building it into a blueprint, build a separate uh, version of it. Oh, for a top-down in the game? Yeah, but basically what I would do then is, um, yeah, just have two different meshes, and once you go in, um, you set visibility of, and just for shits and grins, go into my mini pod here, and whenever I go in, we will just temporarily we'll move you out of the way. You would grab a reference of your static mesh that you want to get rid of or hide, and all you would do is set visibility. So you turn off visibility of this whenever you um, go in and turn on visibility of the new one that you want to display. So you, you would then have two different meshes. So with that same principle here, I'm just going to grab this one, control C, control V. Yeah, it's super simple to, to switch meshes back and forth. Uh, by doing it that way, and it's instant, so you're turning the visibility on and off right then and there. So we'll turn it on here, so you can get a basic idea of what's happening. Is okay now. I'm I'm going in top down mode. I go in here, and it disappears. It's still there. I got a mesh for it and everything. You know, just the collisions are still the same. So you would turn off one and turn on the other. just that easy. Of course, I don't want to do that for mine, but... No problem. Like, this is like... This is... Video is kind of like a hybrid of a spitball and a... You know... Here... Here's a, a free... Um, free ideas to, to work with. See, I was working on, yeah, I was going to change the gravity. So go back here, 
change my gravity scale to 0.5 see how that looks if you want to have less gravity than you do normally and that's also lower the the jump I don't want to do that as much um, but that's one of those things where you need to play around with your gravity scale and your jump Z and so forth to kind of fine tune it to how you think it should be for your gravity um, that's a little better you still have a little bit of low gravity flying capabilities that you feel like you could fly um, but you know I still don't think jump velocity you can take it back up to 200 and I'll do yeah we'll believe it the way it is so you play with those variables to, to kind of get your gravity scale the way you feel that it should be if you look at um, how they were moving on the moon and so forth and old videos from the first time America went to the moon so kind of brings up also another thing that uh, was brought up before somebody was talking about um, uh, water and ice or whatever you know if you're trying to come up with um, a little water plane so they always have to be square or rectangular or whatever and no they don't um, you can create like if you wanted to create one you're creating your like a bathtub or a swimming pool or whatever if you look at the city studios assets um, for the swimming pool hot tub bathtub things like that they have water inside of them and all they did was they created a basic plane and it matched the inner level of the pool or the hot tub or the bathtub or whatever and that's how they created theirs for that um, so right now our, our lack of oxygen is not going to kill us because we're we haven't set that up yet I haven't set up death animations I'm not worried about that part just yet I'm looking at the potential other things that's why I'm not worried about the rest so much um, water planes you can set them up to be rectangular uh, so whenever you're actually doing something like we're not going to have oceans here on the moon so you're not going to worry about well I got to use a water material nah, just come up with something you could use as a ice material in this case I'm probably going to use like rock slate I use the rock basalt for the the basic material that's used on this for the landscape I didn't set up a landscape material this is just um let me actually increase my camera speed just a base material and it didn't look too bad overall when I first did it it's kind of lost some of its detail afterwards I don't know what the hell's up with the shadowing in here but and here's another thing too if you're lazy like I am I mean I'm um, uh, if you don't want to deal with as much of lighting effects like the sun going across the sky or things of that nature uh, there's a plus side you're either on the light side of the, the moon or the dark side of the moon so you're, you're not going to have a daytime and a nighttime cycle while you're on the moon but I would go ahead and change your, your sky to where it looks like it's nighttime sky but I wouldn't want to and I'll do that later and I'll show how I do it later but you want to see the stars and stuff like that you're not gonna have this much brightness um, you're gonna have brightness in here it's gonna look like this but the sky will be black with stars in it because you're actually on the moon and yeah that kind of stuff moon does not have um, the the earth has a magnetic field around it that protects us from solar radiation so the other thing besides of losing oxygen while we're if we're not in a spacesuit we're gonna lose oxygen at a high rate like this much higher and we're gonna die because we can't breathe out here in the moon so you're gonna wanna have a spacesuit on so when you come outside if you don't have a spacesuit on you're gonna die within a few moments but um, if you do have a spacesuit on you'd want your your oxygen levels to go down much much slower realistically in a game you're gonna see people like oh well you're gonna only be able to go out like breath edge you've got a spacesuit on but you can only go outside for you know even with upgrades 
maybe a minute or less than a minute or roughly a minute roughly um, before you run out of oxygen what kind of friggin space suit are you using well I know it's part of the comedy of that game if you've never played Breath's Edge uh, get your butt on Green Man Gaming I believe it's on, on sale on there if not then um, yeah still check it on there anyway but a spacesuit you're probably going to end up with enough oxygen to be outside for at least an hour you would think right so you'd want to adjust the rate of your oxygen it's like this one right here it's set really really high you could set it up to where instead of losing 10 every second um, we lose one per second or you know whatever you play with the rates however you want now we're gonna lose it a lot slower I'd even slow it down more than that I would actually try to to roughly get it to where on this it'd be like 0.1 maybe so you are gonna have to worry about oxygen regeneration while you're out here on on the surface but you could have it set up to where when you go to your lunar rover your your moon buggy you could regenerate and use oxygen from there I'm actually going to slow this down even more. We're going to do one every... You don't want to like... Okay, I, I like leaving my delay timer here at one. But I'm actually going to take this and change it to point one. So it's really slow, but you will end up losing um, oxygen. That's about where I would put it. So within a few moments, you'll notice that it's actually going down on that bar. Um, so back to the water and ice thing here. Yeah, I'll take a look at that whenever we're done streaming. Um, yeah, I'll take a look at that later. Uh, since part of what you're doing with this pro project is you are going to be out searching for, you can see our bar is going down a little bit, it's really slowly, you're going to be looking for ice. So you're going to have to scout around the terrain and I'll create a temporary pool here for ice. Now there's ways you can actually set up the surface of the ice so that it, you actually would slip and slide and that kind of stuff. I'm not going to worry about that just yet. But um, materials let's use the slate this is not going to be like a true white color or a blue color you're not going to have water like ocean or lake you're not going to have moving water on the surface of the moon so you'd want a material that would look like ice that's not perfectly formed so I'm going to use the slate there I'm actually going to go back to my build map and so I, I use the build map as my method of creating things. Wow, we don't need the camera back at 7. So let's bring you back down to 4. 4 is the default, by the way. Um, now you could use a plane, you could use whatever you want. I like BSP geometries because, well, uh, I just do. Uh, but if you used. Um, a plane, we'll say. Go to our material, our slate. Change it over. So now we have that that texture. It may not blend good enough. You make whatever material. I'm not a material guy. If you use um, a plane, what's going to happen is you're stretching the material out and to me I don't like that it doesn't give good uniform uniformity damn I can't speak but if you use BSP geometry have your material selected um, and create say a box collision even if you take that same box collision and change the Z height to 5 it's not a true plane Again, I'm not going to be using the scaling on here. I'm actually going to change this size. In the brush settings, I can do, say, 500 by 300. Uh, 
unless the material does not stretch whenever you do it in the brush settings they will be there and it will they will normalize yep I'll shoot you later for using a mention you know how much I hate mentions especially while I'm streaming I'm a grumpy old bastard and yeah in case anybody hasn't noticed lately um, this new medication is maybe even grumpier than normal so that's really not good <laughs> I don't need to be grumpier than I, I normally am you said if you use your scaling you're gonna stretch your material and that just looks like shit so make your changes in your X Y and Z here I'm just gonna make this a thousand by a thousand Left it five thick because I don't really need any thickness on this. So it doesn't actually stretch the material. Now you can also do other things with it too. Is say if you don't want the material to be that big or that small, you can actually go into your brush settings and so forth and, um, and actually click on it. You now have selected this face and you can actually change the surface properties by moving it left and right, forward and backwards. Um, you can change the, the rotation of it. You can flip the UV of it. Um, you can change the scale of the material. There's a lot of things you can do once you're in this. Plus, you also have um, the ability to go into this mode, geometry editing, and make some changes as well. So if you wanted to, well, I like this the way it is, but I want to have a weird shape over here on this side. So I'll grab this side, I'll, I'll click on the face, and I'll click on extrude don't show this again and then now I can extrude this out that's cool but now if I want to I can grab these two pieces here and change where it sits over here and you could actually sit here and edit the, um, the geometry to suit your needs create custom BSP geometry shapes I'm just gonna make it a regular shape here but you get the point you can sit there and, and do all that now if you go back into your regular mode you notice you lost your material so that's the the upside and the downside if I click on this material here I can either just do that and it should match up pretty good but you could also click on the side of the mesh oh it's already got the material on there but you can also um, if you click on the side you can also select select all adjacent surfaces and it selects everything on there and you can just tell it to use that same material so now I've got any regular shape kind of cool um, and again you can put this in a blueprint and set it up to where hey I am on um, ice now or I found or you've discovered ice or whatever you can set it up to where you have a box collision on it to where you can trigger the event um, but what I'm going to do is create I'm going to go ahead and select my mesh folder so I can see it whenever it comes in here. And then I'm going to create static mesh, go to my assets folder, mesh, and static mesh, crappy underscore ice, and create mesh. There, I have my crappy ice static mesh. <laughs> go do whatever you want with it. I'm just, like I said, making this to where it works. You see there's nothing here so what I can do is click on this now it's selected go back into it again and hit the arrow and now it's going to fix that again come down here to our general settings we change this to 256 light map coordinate index we're going to change that to one and you'd want to go ahead and create your own custom um, collisions for it you can actually add box collisions in, um, 
change the orientation of them. And, and again, for prototyping, I'm just going to use complex as simple. These are not things that I'm going to keep. These are just things that I'm screwing around with for rapid prototype stuff. We'll save our map. We'll go back to our lunar map. So we got our emergency capsule. And I'm just going to come over here and... For now, I'm going to grab my crappy ice. And I'm going to... I've already got a little natural dip in the terrain here. But what I would do is make it whatever size you need and leave it in a dip like that. And if you need to fix it, just go to your... your terrain tools and... fix your terrain. Not smooth, you dumbass. Sculpt. And not that much. Quick taps. So now I gotta rebuild all my freaking lighting because I did that, but oh can't edit landscape in pie. No shit. Sorry. Um but yeah, we'll walk over here and now we can actually see that we have this little natural ice pool. That's just one way you can do it is by adding it in and raising the terrain around it. Eh, need to fix that, so here there we go um, the other way would be going to your landscape tool hit shift and um, well this terrain is kind of screwed up it's like bottomed out right here so I can't do anything with the terrain I don't know why it did that and I moved it up a lot I doing the terrain party thing has its pluses and minuses and so for prototyping, this was good enough for me. But you could take it and hold down the shift key and left click, and it will allow you to dig instead of raise your terrain. Let's go up here to somewhere where we're not normally going to see. So, you can see you can dig it out by holding the shift key. Now i got to rebuild all this freaking lighting. Damn it. So we'll go back to our normal mode, and so yeah, now you can have bodies of ice. Um, I would probably go ahead and, and create a, a blueprint with a box collision or, or a circular collision. Oh, it's basically a box collision that it sits right there on top of that, or you could use other method for um, the collision of it to know, okay, now I am on ice, or I've found ice. Um, and then you'd want to create a... Um, an, your mesh for your uh, uh, like a ice tool or ice ice generator or oxygen generator or whatever you know um, something like that uh, you want placement in your character and you don't want to have to worry about um, a line trace tool or anything special or fancy or whatever else you can just add in a scene component and uh, build point we'll just call our building point uh, and say we'll put that 150 out and 100 down that's going to put it roughly at the, our feet and directly in front of us. Um, you can put it, let's say, 200 out. So you just create a build point right there. You're not going to see it. Um, a scene is a scene component, so you have this natural thing. I'd also go back in while you're doing this if when you're going to set up a placement. Um, jump and stop jumping uh, what I would probably do is like get a reference to whatever to like make sure you're on the ground so you can't do this while you're jumping um, so that you're preventing your your player from jumping and then placing an object um, just gonna 
put a little notation around that. Um, I don't have a match for it. I don't have an actor for a thing. Uh, short term, I'm just going to use my hall tool mesh. What I, I do for creating interiors, um, I'm actually going to go back to my build map so that I don't have to worry about lighting and all that other crap. Um, what I've done and is in my simple multiplayer scheme template is a hall tool and a player peg. What the hell are those? Well, the player peg is going to be the rough, basic, minimal dimensions that you need, which is 100 by 100 width and 200 high, is the minimum height and width that you need for a player to be in a certain location. So if you want to test quickly to see if your player can fit into a certain area in your map, which is also why I don't put materials on my map until I'm done with the map, is because I can sit there and line things up with the grid system because we know that each of these dark grids is a 100 by 100 grid. Each of these big light grids is the same thing. So you got 100, 200, 300, 400. So you got your placement. You know that your player needs a 100 wide area for them to be able to get through without problems with the collision box. Um, so I use that as a, just a quick reference um, tool um, if I've already placed the materials down. But I don't put the materials down so that I can see all these grids. If you notice, each of these bigger grids are made up of smaller grids. They're going to be 10 by 10. So that's 10 units versus the big squares being 100 units. Easy measurements. Um, the hull tool, the reason why I put it in there, is a typical hallway in a building, a medium-sized hallway, is going to be about 300 wide. So if you're building an intersection for a hallway, 300, 300, 300, 300, and height, you want a little bit of interior. Let's say about 250 is normal, but I just went ahead and just made this a 300 by 300 cube. So that was just a little helper tool. I, I create little helper tools like that. So what I'm going to do is my hall tool, I'm going to use that as my oxygen generator. Whatever, I'll use the player peg just as an example. Go to my gadgets folder, create a new blueprint, actor O2 gen, and you can put BP in front of it to know that it's the actor blueprint or behind it, either one. It doesn't matter, but use the same thing all across the board. Um, see, I was creating a cold zone there, which you could add in. I'll do that a different way. Grab this, go to my mesh. I'm going to use my player peg and add component, player peg, and it should be good to go. It's set that the, um, the zero point is in the middle on the ground level. So we'll do that, compile and save, and I'm not worried about it being fancy. For now, let's do keyboard F. We'll keep it simple for now, not get into a complicated placement system with conditions and has this happened? Is there already one nearby? I'm not worried about all the extra conditions right now. Um, I just wanted to spawn in uh, one of these things if I'm in the area of the ice. But first, I'm just going to get it spawned, and then I'll set up one condition, check to see if I'm in an ice zone, and we'll, we'll go from there. Um, so I press F. Let's go ahead and create a variable on ice. Enter. We're going to get a reference to our on ice. So I will go ahead and set up my gadget. Um... I did not set up that in a blueprint. So I don't have my crappy ice in a blueprint. So let's do that really quickly. Um, this won't take but a couple seconds. Again, I'm not making great stuff. Crappy ice. And all we need is our crappy ice.
honestly, I'm not even going to put a mesh in there. I'm just going to do a box collision. And I'm going to, on component, begin overlap and end overlap. I don't need the rest of you. Go away. We need to cast my player character on both. Then set on ice. So when I'm stepping on it, I'm on ice. Whenever I'm not stepping on it, I'm not on ice. And it's turning that variable on and off. So, that's all I need. What are you complaining about? Um, compile, save, excuse me. Thank you. It's because I hadn't saved it in here for that variable. Um, so now it's going to check to see whether or not we're on ice or not before we can actually place this. If we are on ice, then we want to spawn actor from class and we want crappy ice and we want to get a reference to our build point because now we want to let's do right get world transform so we have a location of where we're going to place it dump it in here you'd want to put other conditions on um, like in your your mesh it has ice so now if you place this on it's going to cast back to it and you know whatever set a condition so you can only set one of them down again not worried about being perfect right now so we'll go back to our gadgets and since crappy ice is now a zone I'm actually going to go back into it and go to my box collision uncheck hidden in game compost to save so now whenever I place my crappy ice into the map I can scale it to whatever I need because it's not bound to a mesh and the reason that I put the thing to um, uncheck hide is so that I can see the box now I can see this little box floating around right there for testing but whenever I go back to the final I would I would tell it to hide it in game so now if I try to hit F and spawn one I'm not in ice so I can't spawn it come in here hit F and I should be able to spawn it oh I did um, our crappy ice though we were we're spawning in the crappy ice. However, we didn't give crappy ice the uh, the mesh. Eh. Um, you'd create another actor just for the um, shit. Um, oh, because we didn't finish the uh, that was our, our crappy ice. We didn't actually build the correct thing yet. We got to build the um, the O2 generator. That's what we wanted. Was a BP O2 energy? Yeah, that thing. O2, not the crappy ice. We don't want to build our crappy ice. We want to build our O2 generator. So we come in here, and there we go. We built it. But it only works when we're in the ice zone. Now, there's another thing we can do really quickly, and I will set that up to um, yeah, player peg. Let's give it a, a material really quickly. Material. Let's make it hex pulse. Just so it looks prettier. So now, we come over here, walk into our zone, and we place it down. We can see that it places it right there in front of us. That they're overlapping and all kind of crap. So, yeah, maybe not the best overall. 
But what you can do is um, on this transform, I'll uh, see. Snap to grid. Grid size 100. Then what you'll end up having to do is break transform, make transform. Um, no, not that. Um, from this transform, you want to make transform. And now that you've got this right here, you've got to break that vector and then not that, but um, oh, uh, right click split struck pin, and now it's going to give you your XYZ. Um, Return value, uh, crap, uh, which was it? I'm forgetting which one it is now. Um, and this guy, we need to break transform. And... You know what? Um, I'm not going to worry about it right now, but in the Minecraft project, uh, you'll see how I did it the correct way. Um, but you can actually break it down to where it'll snap to grid, and that way, when you're placing it down, uh, you can set it up to where it will snap into a specific orientation so that it's always going to be, you know, facing the correct direction. So if you want facing and snapping onto the grid that you see down there on the ground, you can set up snap to grid and say go back and watch my, my Minecraft um, video where I was placing the uh, the objects down and it shows how I set it up to set the blocks down and um, that way you're placing them in the correct direction at all times. So the practicality of this, now I can take this out and again save and we go back to our regular map. That's why I have the build map. I can test crap out here and then go back to my main map and now that we know that we have this set up as a um, an ice pad, I can then take my gadget crappy ice and I can scale it however I want so this is the only build area that you can use or what have you so you can set that up and you know what if you want to make it fit better there's nothing wrong with overlapping so you can actually take that and rotate it you can scale it um, do whatever you want to shape this you can put another one right here and scale it a little bit smaller if you want to have more room for the player to build a build there um, I said I left that box visible so we could see it you'd want to turn that off later on but now you can see okay I'm over here I'm capable now of building an ice generator yay and there was much rejoicing so this is my oxygen generator it would then you know you could set it up to where you have to put down plumbing to run it back to your base or whatever else uh, or you know a tank refill system um, you could also set up your blueprint for your O2 generator look at your viewport um, add in a box collision scale this 5 by 5 so when you're standing next to it, it's an oxygen generator. So um, we already set up some of our functionality that we did in the um, mini pod. So all I got to do here is I will grab this, Control C, and what I'll do is I'll right click on this begin overlap and 
end overlap. Paste that, and guess what? I don't have to rewrite everything. Not that it was complicated, but it just saved me a buttload of time. So, oh yes, kiss my ass. Go there. I'm getting ready to wrap this video up. So, um, now whenever I come over here, we'll wait for just a minute so we can see that our oxygen. That's why I usually, like I said, leave the. Um, I don't do the kill effects for. Okay, now you're out of oxygen. You're going to start dying now. Um, let's go back to my character blueprints. <coughs> but I want my, my if I'm building things that are going to affect my oxygen levels. Um, right now, I'm going to go ahead and do 10 every second again, just so we can see. It's going to be drastic, but you can see that when we go into our our habitat here, it fixes our oxygen levels. So I just wanted to drastic make our, our oxygen levels go down. Come over here. I can now place one of those, and guess what? If I'm standing within the radius of it, I'm good to go. But if I leave the radius of my oxygen generator, my, my O2 goes down. I come back, and it regens. I'm good to go again. But, oh no, i got to get back over there. Oh, i got to get my oxygen again. So there's your oxygen regulation system. Um, I said I would normally keep this at a much lower, lower rate. So instead of 10 every second, I would do point, um, point 0.1 actually is what I would normally use. So point 0.1 every second, and that's going to be a decent oxygen drop rate. So you're not like you're going to have more time to, to maneuver around. So as you're out doing your exploration with this project, uh, okay, my oxygen's going down. I need, oh, look, there's ice. I can now come over here, build an oxygen generator, and I can regen my oxygen. Now that's going to extend how far away I can get from there before I need to worry about my oxygen again. So you're, you're making your player think, well, okay, I can get to this hill right here this is my halfway point. If I get to this point and I haven't seen more oxygen, or in this case, more ice nearby, then I'm going to have to run back to my previous one. And you're you're building a radius of how far your player, you're tethering your player, in other words. You can have a map as big as you freaking want, but they can't get there if they don't have the oxygen. If they're going to die um, before they reach the next oxygen level, like, okay, whew. Now, again, what you can do is in your O2 generator, your box, short term, you could also put a particle effect on it. Like you could see an aura around it. And so you know that when you're in that aura, then um, you're going to regen oxygen. I'm going to turn off hide in game so that it, you're actually able to see it. Let me get rid of these. And change my oxygen drop rate. Again, more drastic. So when your player is out of his, his health pod, you know, you see my, my oxygen bar is going down. I know that if I go in here, I can regen. You're now regenerating oxygen. Now when you leave it, you're going to stop regenerating oxygen. You go over here. Hey, look, there's ice. I can regen here, but... Oh, I gotta make a um, oxygen regen. So I've added the the cube in. I'm I put it in, but it's not working because I'm not within the range of it. Now, whenever I get there, uh, okay, I can regen my oxygen. Now I can continue to explore. You've like I said, you've built a a built-in tethering system. So now when you're creating your map, you can control where the player can and cannot go based on oxygen. Um, if they know that they can't get past a certain point, once they get to that halfway point, if I go any farther, then I know that I'm not going to be able to get back to my oxygen point if I don't see oxygen soon. Oxygen. Ice. You need to find those ice pods, or ice packs, to be able to place the O2 generators down, to be able to regen your oxygen back to full again, so you can continue exploring. Um... 
I would set a really fast regenerate because realistically, if you go to something, then you want it to really just poof. You know, you go to an air compre or an air, an air tank, then it will fill up really quickly. Okay, now fast regen. But I would also think about um, creating a variable in the O2 generator. Um, you could also put in here um, an oxygen, make that into a float, compile and save. It started off at zero. So when you first place it down, um, we'll do event begin play. Uh, we will get oxygen and we will set oxygen. So on begin play, what we want to do is create a, a generation system. So want to, and I, actually I would put this in a custom event and then attach the custom event to the begin play. So custom generate O2. So when you first place it down, it, it hasn't had a chance to work yet. So it needs to start generating oxygen. So we'll do a delay. We'll do one second. And then you could also actually put the... Um, and then we want it to do that again. So you could also put a widget above or on the actual thing so you can actually see a bar on there so you can actually place the widget onto the uh, the individual freaking thing and you can look, walk over to it and see that it's it, it actually has oxygen um, I'm sure if I want to take the time to actually do this right now but let's just see or I could take a break and come back and actually continue on with building these little features like this. But for now, what we want to do is we want to set an oxygen rate and it's going to generate. So we're going to add for right now 10 every second. So it generates quickly. So if, if the oxygen generator hasn't been on long enough, then it's not going to have any oxygen to give us. And then as soon as we, we get there and we take oxygen away from it, then yeah, we could build a whole system based around this. Like I said, starting off with the basic prototype of okay, this is it, and then there you go. Um, I'm not actually going to plug this in. I'm just going to leave this in the custom event phase for right now. But that's what we can look at later on is for this concept is setting up that your oxygen generator. When as soon as you put it down, then it's going to start building oxygen up into its oxygen tanks. Therefore, you have a reserve. Now, if you go back over to that tank and you take 5% of it every time you f go for a full refill, then it's going to take time for it to regenerate back up. Or if you hit that oxygen generator and it takes 80% away right off the bat. If you and your buddy both go over there together in the multiplayer and you just took 80%, well, that only leaves 20% of oxygen for him to get. So he's going to have to wait for a couple seconds for the oxygen to build back up again so he can keep topping off. So you can see how that kind of works. Is Somebody's not going to get the full amount if it doesn't have the full amount. Well, we'll worry about that later. But right now we know that um, we have an oxygen system that's depleting our oxygen until we go to a safe zone. And then as we're exploring around, as soon as we find ice, then... You know, we could plop down a um, an oxygen generator, stand close to that, and actually plug into it. We'll say, and generator oxygen. Now we can get back out and keep exploring. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be a cool concept um, for that. Now you got your oxygen generator. Then later on, we'll have to come up with a, um, a method of okay, if we want our our base to continuously have oxygen. It's not going to make oxygen on its own. So we're going to have to have some way of tethering this to this. Like I said, these are all just the prototypes of all these different pieces. 
the pieces parts to get the proof of concept going so that you know where to go with and what to build and how to build it because like I said this looks like crap but it's all prototype you're getting the basic functionality and that's that's what I like doing is the basic functionality I could care less about doing 3d models or doing um, audio editing or materials editing or things like that I like the the troubleshooting of okay um, how can we control and contain our player so as we're building our map, let's jack the speed back up again. Um, we know that our player can go from our health, our normal pod, to here before, and they're good to go. But there's the distance from here to here. You're only going to lose about 20% of your oxygen at most. So there's a good chance you, you if you're, while you're looking in the the vicinity around your pod, trying to find your first oxygen producing area which is going to be your ice um, that's you want it to be close proximity to the player so they can have that discovery oh if I find ice I can build an ice generator we'll worry about having the materials to build it and crap like that later but so now I know that I have that within this radius well if you want your player to be able to, to do something back here then you need to make sure that they have enough oxygen to be able to go back there, build, come back, refill, or you can place ice back here for them to be able to build another oxygen generator. And then once they build a structure, we'll say, if they need to, then they can build an oxygen production facility or whatever the hell else. Um, so it's taking that basic concept of if you don't want your player to go to this area right over here, we'll say, then to prevent them from spending much time over there you don't put ice over there they have they won't have enough oxygen if they know that they can only make it to about right here we'll say um, before they reach that halfway point if they continue farther forward they're not going to have enough oxygen to make it back to their containment facility or their, their base or their generator if they continue on past the halfway point then they're going to die before they can get back to oxygen so th if they know that they're going to die if they try to get over here then they're not going to go over there hopefully they'll either learn from their mistake or they'll just be stupid and just die every time they try to go there but if you want them to start migrating towards this area over here and the only way to get there is to go up this side over here over here and over here and over there you place your ice in strategic areas that allow them to be able to go from their uh, their home base which is their their lander pod they can go over here then they come over here get some ice to build oxygen go over here then they can build more oxygen generator here and then they can go over here and over here and then they can build another one here so you can plan the route for where you want your player to be able to go by the location of your ice spots <coughs> and of course the goal is to find that big ass piece of ice that you can actually build an oxygen production facility so that you can start doing like um farming and um, so you can start sustaining food then like other facilities you know that's when you start building your modular building system so if you want this to be the area where you want your player to settle then that's where you would put the largest piece of ice so this would be like the magic golden area then you, you could find other resources that are only available in this little area right there so that you know that your player can't find titanium over here. The only place they can find titanium to build with is over here. Because we're going to want the player to use titanium to be able to do construction and so forth. You can control where your player goes and, and don't go by the oxygen generation and the materials that they need for crafting. So you are in control of what goes on. Alright, so if you guys want to see more about this project and, and little things that we can add in here, like um, maybe a mining nodule. I'm not worried about animations right now. I'm not worried about, well, uh, we need a pickaxe, or we need this, or are you going to use a pickaxe on a freaking moon? You just traveled thousands of miles through space to get to the moon. Do you think you're going to be using a freaking pickaxe? Probably not. 
um, you might have a little, you know, prospector's pick so that you can dig through the dust or whatever. And I'm like, oh, well, what is this rock over here? Oh, yes, that's titanium. And then you could have a titanium zone and put down a titanium harvester or whatever, you know. You start building the individual things like the... Um, the oxygen generators and things of that nature. That's the kind of stuff you're going to do. But you, your primary thing you've got to find is oxygen, which you can get your oxygen by setting up um, an O2 generator on ice because hydrogen and oxygen, well, guess what? You're, you're separating the hydrogen from the oxygen, so you're going to use the hydrogen as a fuel system for burning for powering up your plants. So whenever you set up a... Um, an O2 generator, it's just generating O2, you're venting off the hydrogen off into the, uh, the atmosphere. So, that's kind of wasted, which is good. It's kind of We want something like that to where we have to be able to get the resources to build a um, I, I, what would be a good name for the, the separator? You know, I'm sure there is a fancy name for it, but essentially we want to build a bigger machine that's harder to build with more resources that will split the hydrogen from the oxygen and then have storage tanks for our hydrogen that we can use and burn as fuel and then the oxygen that we can use for breathing or for air tools or things of that nature. So, I think this is a great concept for a game. You know, I've been on the conquest of trying to find games that are less than lethal. We had enough kill shit games out there on the market. There's other things you can do that are challenging to a player besides killing shit. So, this is the concept. And I, I may run with this idea. I mean, there, I got a lot of really good ideas for games that I think they're good. But, I don't have the time. Well, I do have the time. I got nothing else better to do with my fucking time but do this shit. But, yeah. Too fucking lazy to actually build a game. Let's get down to the nitty-gritty on that shit. I'm too fucking lazy to actually build a game. So, if I can get you guys to build a freaking game, and you guys can make awesome monies and shit, and then just kind of give me a kickback because you're using my ideas, you know, hint, hint, um, then awesome as hell. Um, then I get a kickback from your game. You can give me 10% of your... your uh, your revenue. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. That sounds good to me. How else am I going to retire in Thailand if you guys aren't giving me all the monies from all my wonderful ideas and help that I've given you? I can get 10 of you guys to get out there and make the freaking game of your dreams using my ideas and you're giving me a, a percent, one percent, whatever, you know. If I'm getting... $50,000 a year from you guys making all your millions of dollars from your ultra cool games. I can retire off of that quite lovely on $50,000 a year. Hell, I could even afford, you know, like tie hookers every now and then if that were the case. Because, you know, not that I want them. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's a little dehydrated. I gotta drink some more water. Uh, <laughs> but the whole concept of is I would like to be able to retire in Thailand. It's an inexpensive country to, to, to live in. And hell, if I had the money right now to found a full-on um, game company to where I could hire people to actually build the game and shit like that, it would be in Thailand. And I would move the, the, the crew to Thailand and would leave some property and that kind of shit. And we'd all have a damn good time making video games and, you know, chasing girls, chasing boys chasing girl boys, whatever your preference is. I don't give a damn. You can find them both there. You can find nice girls, nice boys, nice boy girls, whatever you want. I'm not going to judge out loud. Um, <laughs> but I think that's the, the ultimate place. Beautiful country. Beautiful country. I mean, it's absolutely freaking gorgeous. But yeah, we're not going to talk about Thailand. Thailand's awesome. Um, Thailand is more than just hookers and bars, just so you know. For people who think, well, you know, Thailand's all about the hookers and the bar scene and nightlife, not not really. It's a beautiful country, and, you know, take a look at it. You might actually be surprised at how nice it actually is. So we're going to take a break for a little bit, and come back. I'm going to actually do a, a lighting build to clean up this. And we'll see what else we can come up with for gadgets and gadgets. Um, I may actually come in here and drop in my crappy ice 
in this spot and you know I could scale it this one but I don't like doing the scaling on stuff like this I'll do 10 ooh that's a little bit big um, I'd probably go back at it and just make my own custom mesh for this area or what have you but like I said you set up your ice We'll let this be a large ice area. And got a landscape. We're on sculpt already. So we have a larger ice zone here. I would probably not just do it like this. I would actually have all the terrain a little bit higher and just dig out the area where I want my ice to be. I don't know. I, I think this is actually a pretty cool concept for a game. And oh, yes, I know we're in pie. I think it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a break, and when I come back, um, I'll do some more. You guys jump in and say, you know, like, okay, what about this? And you know, come up with content ideas for what we can place out in our map for exploration-wise or whatever. We know that we need a, a production facility location and one thing I forgot to do on this was place down the crappy ice zone. It's going to scale it big enough to cover. Now being that it's slightly underground you can actually do that to where the uh, box collision is underground as well. To kind of exaggerate this for now. What you can see is if you don't raise the height of it and the ground, you're not going to overlap with that anyway because it's underground. You'll still overlap with it, but that's yeah, good enough for now. So when you're running over there, you're not going to see the, the thingamajiggy, but it will work, I promise. I'll run over there and I'll place an OT generator. So like if we want to build, um, can build, uh, whatever the hell we're going to call, what are we going to call this freaking um, oxygen generator, separator, fuel generator, whatever the hell, figure out what a name for that, the the Spunkin Meyer 4000 or whatever the hell, you know? So now I can build... Uh, do -do 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 -do. Gotta raise it up a little bit, I guess. Um, crappy Ice 2... 40... Oh, no. Not the Crappy Ice. I don't want the Crappy Ice. I want that Crappy Ice. Um, let's try it at zero. Problem we had just then, it was... It wasn't sticking up above the level of the ground. So let's actually bring it up to 10. What's that happening, bro? Uh, let's see, let's play from here, make sure that it's gonna work. Yes, okay. Well, I'm boring as hell, so the baby should fall right asleep watching my videos. So there, we got, um, our little ice lake right here. We can actually build an oxygen generator that allows us to get oxygen from there. But I said, was getting ready to take a break, so I'm actually we'll come back and I'll do some more on this. But um, you guys be thinking about names for our next tool, which would be um, the the tool right. This right here is our our placeholder for our oxygen generator, and the surface that we're walking walking on right now is ice. And it's going to harvest oxygen from the, the H2O in the ice, or the, the, the water. Converts. I've been going for almost two hours. So I'm only going to take about a five or ten minute break. Just go have a quick smoke break and top off my water jug or water bottle. All right, um, yeah, I'll check that. Won't see it, but I'll check it. You're set up on the the developer channel, so you've got private access channel anyway. 
So you can just put messages in there. Nobody else really will see them. The only other person that's semi-active was uh, our potato farmer, and you know he, he still hasn't got his new computer yet. You can see we're running out of oxygen there. So, yeah, this glowy thingy right here, our temporary placeholder oxygen generator, converts the ice into oxygen only. So now I can come over here and it regenerates my oxygen back to normal. Um, we need a name for, and these are all temporary, like I call this one the crappy ice and the O2, crappy ice O2 generator and that kind of crap. Uh, so these are all placeholder names and stuff too, but we're going to use this as our construction area. We have to build on or near ice. So we can place the O2 generators wherever we want, um, but we need a name for the other generator because, like I said, H2O or water is H2O. It's one. Uh, here, here's your chemistry lesson for the day. Um, it's essentially um, a hydrogen and two oxygen combined together to make H2O. So we want this, this machine's going to magically separate the oxygen molecules uh, into separate oxygen so we can breathe and hydrogen. It's so a hydrogen we can use to break down and use it as our fuel. Um, quick recap of what this whole project was about um, was the fact that within the next five years, we're going to be on the moon again. And hell, Elon Musk is probably going to build a freaking hotel there. So what we are, is in this game, is we are the advanced scout party that was sent to the moon. And here's our little lander module that comes down. We'd, we'd probably put legs or shit on it and, like, fallen parachute. We go into it. We're in a safe zone. We can build doors, automatic doors, airlocks, all that kind of crap. Like I said, these are these are the prototype stuff for a proof of concept on the little things. So we're in our, our module here. It's got a uh, built-in oxygen tanks, and for right now, we have infinite oxygen, but later on, we would set up an oxygen level, and every time we come in here, we're, we're draining oxygen. Our whole point to this game is we're the advanced party. Before we can colonize the moon, we have to have a source of oxygen. You don't want to bring friggin' tanks of oxygen from Earth. That's just stupid. Um, on the, the poles of the moon, there has been water-based oxygen found, and this is real shit now. There has been real water-based um, ice. Now, I've left the collisions visible so you can see. Hey, look, there's an ice patch right here. So when I come over here, see, I'm losing oxygen steady. Just because I found ice don't mean I get free O2. Um, You'll have to find the components, and then once I have the components, and then I can deploy an ice generator or a generator that converts the ice into water, the water into oxygen. We don't get free hydrogen from this. So as soon as I step inside the radius of it, we plug into it, we gain oxygen. As soon as we leave it, we start losing oxygen again. So for me to be able to continue going out here and scouting and harvesting and, and finding moon rocks and shit and titanium for building these new wonderful tools, that we pick up a titanium rock and we, we magically smelt it into um, sheets of titanium that we can build a tools out of and shit. It's magic. Well, it's video games. It's magic, right? So, but like I said, to control our players' um, ability of where they can and cannot go, we adjust the amount of oxygen depletion so that they can only go so far before they have to find and build an oxygen generator again. So, and once you place your oxygen generators, as long as there's ice there, and for now we're going to assume that we have a permanent source of ice, that it's going to be there for many, many years to come. Hey, look, we found more ice. So I'll come over here, I'll build another oxygen generator, and I can regen ice. So while I'm taking my break, you guys think of a name maybe that we can call our other generator. So this one only generates oxygen and lets us breathe. You know, gives us our O2, so now we can refill there, go out and keep scouting, building, harvesting, crap like that. And then um, we need a name for the other 
or if you guys want to Google it, whatever, figure out what the name's going to be for our new machine, which is going to be one that separates the hydrogen from the oxygen and lets us build up an oxygen rate and oxygen and hydrogen separate tanks so that we can use the hydrogen as fuel for running our other machines for whatever else and then of course we use our oxygen for breathing and if we need like hand tools that are air powered then we can deplete our players oxygen because we have to use that oxygen for the freaking tools or you know we can do um, solar panels build solar panels that uh, that generate electricity and then we can use tools as long as we're within a certain proximity or we can use rechargeable tools and plug them in and get a fresh battery or whatever else you know and then we can look at doing that well we'll, we'll say uh, on the next video I'll go, uh, go ahead and do either I'll build the hydrogen oxygen separator or I can build solar panels or I can build both of them and we'll do a basic system on that because um, what I was doing here with the um, the O2 generator was starting to set up a fact that once you place it down there's no oxygen in it it takes time for it to build up a level of oxygen and then you can come over and use the oxygen level that's in there so, so these models don't have to be pretty they just need to be functional um, prototypes so that we can actually get things to work so when we first build it, we want the oxygen generator to have no oxygen in it whatsoever, and it's going to take a little bit of time to build up the oxygen for the first time. <coughs> and also the, for the fact that um, if you go over here and take oxygen out of the O2 generator, once it's full, you might take 60% of the oxygen from it, and it needs to build back up again to full before you can, you know, if we're doing it in multiplayer and two players come over and one needs we both need um, 80 percent oxygen then there's only a hundred in there instead of 160 percent you, you can't get that so somebody's not going to get a full charge of oxygen so you know I would probably do if you're going to do it as multiplayer which this one's set up to run as multiplayer but if you're going to do it in multiplayer then you'd probably want a little bit less for it to fill up your, your players tanks so um, you know you could do pick up objects like okay I don't have an O2 tank an, an O2 reservoir so I only have a short amount of time that I can actually get out here and do anything we can build an oxygen tank throw it on our back maybe set it up to where we can use two oxygen tanks and or you know, whatever, or just one O2 tank, like a scuba tank to sit on our back. Or, you know, you could use a separate character mesh with a, you know, I'm not going to leave all these models here. They'll probably end up using the Cindy Studios um, space pack or something like that. So I actually have a, you know, a spacesuit looking thing or something. I don't know. We'll figure that shit out as we go. Right now, we're just prototyping, getting shit in work. And then we'll go from there. So you guys let me know um, if you want to see um, the solar panel and the, um, the hydrogen oxygen generation station and things like that or what, what, what you kind of want to see and we'll spitball and run through this idea and like I said if you want to run with this idea and make your own game go right ahead um, I'm just going to keep playing where I'm with it and building the basic portions of it getting the little things working first before I'm worried about making the terrain pretty or the character look correct or you know, whatever. I may throw Cindy Studios assets in here, which will make things look a little nicer. Um, well, we've already got reduced gravity. You see, whenever we jump, you float a little bit more. You don't jump as high, but it's a slower rate of gravity. So we've already affected gravity. Um, so unless you're saying like a, a thruster pack, you the whole concept, though, is actually since this is going to in in real life, they're talking about within before 2024, we're going to have people on the moon. They're projecting putting like 12 people on the moon before and the first woman on the moon as well. Yeah, so this is based off of real world right now technologies for the most part. Um, except for, you know, we're going to have our own little tools like our 
O2 generator. So I'll do like a solar generator because that's something that we can build right now within the next couple of years in real life. So we're trying to, to mimic what's going on in the real world capability for building. Um, so an oxygen generator, solar generators, um, so we can have power, um, other machines that run off of hydrogen, which we can do for real. Um, so we have our hydrogen and oxygen separators. We'll also have to have a, um, a water generator or a water uh, system to where it will sit on the ice. It will just thaw the ice and... Yeah, well, we don't have any real terraformers, but we're, we're terraforming to the best of our ability. Um, the things we have to think about is the ice is only found in the... Yeah, so that, that was... We covered that earlier also, is having a um, uh, green room, essentially. So, like our pods that we have right here for normal, everyday living... We'd have other ones that have um, glass roofs on them so that we can walk inside. They'll have a floor. They'll have soil. Um, but the player can't just have soil. Where are you getting the damn dirt from? So we're taking elements from the, the moon dirt and our physical waste. Our, we plug our suits in, and or if we're inside of a uh, an oxygenated, pressurized um, facility, we're going to have bathrooms. you got to poop. So your composter system and your food waste and so forth, your composting system to generate the soil, so to speak. You gotta have that. And then you gotta a frickin' moon buggy and transportation and there's all kind of little elements we're gonna have to do. So what I'll do is um, I'll bring in the, 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 the solar generator and then we'll do maybe the um, the hydrogen oxygen splitter um, and we can start adding the little pieces and like I said nothing has to be perfect and, and pretty right now we just need to get the basic systems out and you know functional to where okay I've got this I need I've got the ability to we're gonna say that um, your lunar pod whenever you first land it needs to be right there next to ice so to simulate that I'm actually going to take this my lunar pod and say that we landed right next to a freaking ice thing because why the hell would you land 20 miles from the nearest um, source of oxygen so we'll do this and we know we're going to get oxygen when we're in there so what I'll do is I'll just put an oxygen generator right here on the ice and we could simulate that um, and whatever. If you wanted to throw a cable actor or you could let's get a material no, not material and whatever we'll do burnished metal grab a cylinder and we can simulate that um, we've got uh, a pipe that runs from point A to point B All right, you gotta move so that we can plug you in I got that Um, and we'll just stretch it out so it'll look like a, a pipe is connected to our oh good god put your freaking speed back to four yeah so we get the point is we, we've landed and player start bad size no shit Sherlock so sorry you may be watching so I'll, I'll, I'll curtail with the their profanities there's our oxygen generator so we can come over here we can plug into it and get O2 or we can go back inside here and get O2 so we've got our this is our lunar base this is where we started at um, so we'll go from there 
then this isn't big enough for us to sustain long-term life. So now we either need to um, come up with how do we get this? Do Are we harvesting dirt and turning it into titanium sheets and pipes and planks? Or are we saying, hey, we have just discovered, which, you know, let's fly back over here. We have discovered location X for our first um, uh, base of operations. And then we'll say, okay, we'll call in if we're right here. Play from here. Hey, this is a great site. We can actually come in here and we can build O2 generators. We can build on the site. Or I think what we should be able to do is be able to build these little generators or, or carry them with us. We'll say maybe be able to carry two or three of them. Be much smaller than this with pipes coming off of them so that we can hook into them, blah, 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 blah. So it seems more logical that we're actually carrying them with us and to be able to place and only be able to carry a couple of them. But say, okay, tag this for Terraform. And at that point, then um, Elon Musk sends us, or whoever else is going to start sending us the things that we need. Okay, we are ready for. Um, and we're on crowdsource funding, so we got to wait for um, either Elon or uh, what's the other guy that the, the the guy that owns Amazon is also planning on setting up shop here on the moon. So you got Elon Musk, you, and you got Tesla, which means you know we're gonna have to come up with our fictional uh, characters. We can't use oh Elon Musk is gonna send us this. And we'll just come up with our own. This is who is sending it, and he runs Tesla. He owns Tesla, so he's going to be the one that's going to make our moon buggies. So we'll have the the so Draco 2000 moon buggy that uh, is an electric vehicle that relies on our solar generation stations to keep it charged, and our quick charge stations, and shit like that. So we can base our story loosely on what real life is. Nothing. I, I've been stalling off taking my break for the last 15 minutes. Um, just recapping the story stuff. So we're building our story as we go. So I think that since we're going to have, in real life, we've got um, Amazon and Tesla. we got Elon Musk. And what is the guy that owns um, Amazon? I forget his name, but he's he's also planning on, on coming to the moon. That's the O2 um, generator. So you can see I'm out of oxygen, so I can run over here and I can regenerate my oxygen. Yeah, so you got Amazon and, and Tesla are going to be kicking in. So, yeah, I'm going to have a smoke break, refill my water bottle, and check on Mom. Uh, then I'll come back and I'll, I'll make the uh, the solar generator, and I'll do the, the hydrogen-oxygen separator for our fuel systems. And whatever, I might add the first buggy in here. This is just a sample project. This project will, I don't know if you can see in the upper right-hand corner, it's called Blue Harvest. You guys know what Blue Harvest was? Where the name Blue Harvest was used originally? And I, I'm not going to tell you, but just you look up Blue Harvest, you'll figure it out. And essentially, I, I was thinking, well, you know, I'm harvesting ice and, and is part of what I'm we're trying to do here so that we can set up our area for population. Well, I, ice Blue, Blue Harvest, okay, that works. And then I went out and had a smoke and sitting there like, I can't use Blue Harvest. So I'm going to recreate this entire project later anyway, but this is my proof of concept, and I'm not adding any other asset packs into this project. This is all spitball crap that we're doing. So if I get tired of it and say, what the hell, and then just package it up and say, here, if anybody want it, just roll with it, fix it, do whatever you want with it. I've got no proprietary stuff that I can't give away. I've got starter content, and I've got... Um, third person template and it's all stuff that um, anybody can get right off the bat. The only thing that's I'm sorry, the only thing that's in this project that asset wise that is not free is my simple multiplayer Steam template. Um, so, yeah. So for people who have already donated to me and and have or have purchased the, um, the simple multiplayer Steam template I will make this project available to you guys free of charge if you want it it's crappy but you know you see what I'm doing as I'm building it so 
probably do it a hell of a lot faster by yourself than waiting for my dumbass to upload it. So take a break for a little bit, and then I will just pick up the stream, and I will start doing the um, the solar generator next, and then I'll do the, the hydrogen-oxygen separator so that we can have those, and then we'll continue working on our storyline. Again, I don't care if you guys make the, the game on your own and put it on Steam and make billions of uh, bucks off of it, but just remember the old bastard that gave you the idea, because remember, I want, I want a minimum $50,000 a year so I can retire in Thailand. That's it. So, just remember, if you're, you know, you're making big bucks off of the game that I helped you with the concept of and you're building, then just give me a little kickback. So, so beef up Mark and go sit there and have him some frickin' margaritas and pad thai and, you know, some lat mu and things like that. And if, you know, we decided later that, you know, we come up with enough money to build a, a software company and a game company, and we're building this professionally, then I'll set up shop in Thailand. And like I said, if you want, um, Thailand's a land of smiles, a beautiful country. It's a low cost of living. Uh, and there's plenty of pretty women and handsome guys and, and those in between. So whatever your preference is, you're covered that way too. So... See you in about 10, 15 minutes. We'll pick up from where we left off, and we'll make some cool new stuff. I'm going to go ahead and do a, a lighting build, so we're, we're up to snuff on that. So i see you guys really soon. Oh, we could do that, too. Thailand's awesome. You know that. You've been there, schmuck. I might be smack you. I, yeah, you can go in there again next week. You suck. All right. You guys give me about 10, 15 minute break. Um, I'm not even going to change the name of the stream. I'm just going to, I'll change it later. I'm just going to take a break, come back, and just hit that. Uh, I'll make a comment in Discord saying, hey, I'm back. I'm start streaming again. And then um, I'm just going to kick it back up again. So we'll see you guys in about 10, 15 minutes.